8.46am on September 11, 2001, American Airlines Flight 11 has struck the North Tower of the World Trade Center. We have a, uh, what appears to be a very serious, is that the World Trade Tower? President George W. Bush is in front of a class of second graders at a school in Sarasota, Florida. By 9.03 a.m., United Airlines Flight 175, another 767, has crashed into the South Tower. It was obvious to the press corps in the back and to the teacher in the classroom uh, that something was going on. Two decades have passed since that day, but it's still a vivid memory for President Bush's former communication aide, Gordon John Drow. Uh, it's a very emotional uh, day, and the memories are um, really a reminder of uh, how difficult that day was and how it started off as such a routine, normal day and a beautiful day in many places in the U.S. and ended up with an attack on the homeland, which we just didn't think was possible at the time. Gordon spent 9-11 inside the president's inner circle on board Air Force One. And I know this has been described as the safest, but also the most dangerous place at that time. I did feel both uh, safe and, of course, scared. When the, when the towers fell, you know, I think it was in the, it was in the staff uh, seating area in the, in the middle of the plane. It just really was a uh, punch to the gut. I mean, it was, became a much even more serious and even more emotional day than it already had been. More lives would be lost in the 20 years of war that followed in Afghanistan and Iraq. And today, the threat of terrorism still shapes America's foreign and defence policy. I think it's important that we uh, commemorate this day and talk about its, its historic importance, the, the changes that it, that it led to, whether it's increased airport security, increased counterterrorism, uh, cooperation with countries around the world, the, the war in Afghanistan, so many other uh, changes since then. It's, it's important to understand why. A moment to reflect and a day we'll never forget. Dan Murphy, CNBC.